How we doing folks? Welcome back to another video. Hope this video finds you well. Just thought I'd do a quick overview on my bike. KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. Um, I bought this bike new. Have it about 7 months now. Just over 7,000 kilometers on it. So I thought I'd just give you a quick brief overview of the actual machine. Lucky enough to buy this new so no major problems with it going well and just had its first introductory service and then the next service interval is 16,000 kilometers would you believe I said I'd be pricey enough because that's to be done by the main dealer but it is what it is and um, we'll just talk you through some of the actual items I bought for the bike as I said it's not a big in-depth analysis it's just a quick overview I don't have the knowledge of the bike to give you the ins and outs of everything on it I know it has a 24 litre tank um, it has the optional travel pack installed which I purchased as an, an optional extra that includes the slipper clutch auto downshift blipper and the hill hole control which I don't really use I have it turned off currently um, the bike is fairly stock to be honest with you apart from one or two things uh, the first thing I got rid of was the screen the screen is pretty bad not the default screen it's far too small far too narrow I'm six foot one so when I was actually on the bike um, I couldn't even hear the engine to be honest with you so loud the wind noise nothing but wind turbulence bad air dirty spoiled air as they say um, so the first thing I got rid of was the screen and I bought this Pug Puig Vario touring screen in the semi smoked the the dark smoked one was just too dark, you wouldn't be able to see through it. So I went with the semi smoked clear, it was, it was basically white, didn't look good at all. Um, I think I matched the existing plastic on, a, on this quite well. Um, the actual screen on the KTM is not automatic, like on the Tiger, Tiger 1200 Explorer. It has an 8 position adjustable screen by way of an industrial mechanical click and that's its lowest setting right there which is grand and if we move it back up to a higher setting you'll see from the front it's actually quite high it's very very high to be honest with you and um, we usually ride with um, one or two clicks down i can see straight over the here's the eagle eye view so if you're sitting like so that's the view you have. Um, the next thing I bought for the bike was probably the yes the C KTM Power Part C. The original seat isn't too bad actually. Um, it's a quite wide seat. So if you're not that tall, you might lose a bit of ground clearance there trying to put your feet in the ground. After about an hour or two in the normal default saddle my um, spine was disappearing into my arse so I opted for the KTM Power Parts Gel Fill C which was quickly followed by the orange KTM Crash Bars which are a very good piece of kit actually quite heavy for what they are um, they're bolted on here in two positions on the actual frame and then if you see this you get this rubber grommet and it slides onto a bolt that goes right up into the frame and then the main bolt there clicks it on and then the two halves me in front of the radiator here you also got a pyramid fender extender I don't know if you can see that there to reduce the mud guard to stop the crud being flicked up onto the actual radiator on the um, the engine there what I was going to tell you I bought an SW Motec tank bag I think it's called a city tank bag in its current state there it wouldn't be waterproof but um, it's a very very good piece of kit we can walk around and show you um, it's expandable up to 9 litres in its current state I think it's 5 as I said I'll be doing a review on this at a later day it's just to give you a quick overview um, clicks on to the actual bike by way of an adapter like so so you purchase the bag and the bag can go on any bike and then you just get the adapter 
to suit individual bikes so if you had five or six bikes just buy the one bag and then just buy the adapter relating to each bike that you own um, comes on and off really really quickly but I have the quick lock system just pull that there and it opens and closes and it goes on really really easy even one handed I should be able to get it on like so as I said I'll do a review at a later date um, the other thing I got on the bike was a Scott Oil RE system which um, hooks up to the battery, it doesn't hook up to the actual vacuum of the engine so I got that fitted, I'll do a review on that soon as well, I only fitted that there about two days ago I don't know if you can see it there, it's quite neat so as I said it's hooked up to the battery so as soon as you turn the bike on it doesn't actually start the oil flowing basically there is an accelerometer built in and you can adjust that to the sensitivity of your bike's engine so obviously if I have a V-twin like I do here 1300cc V-twin is actually quite vibey so I have the sensitivity turned down a little bit so I have a set that at 30 kilometers an hour the oil starts to flow and anything under 30 miles an hour or 30 kilometers an hour sorry it stops the oil flow and um, again I'll do a review on that soon um, the other thing I bought was a set of V-Trek levers, these are the Verio levers, they're the only ones that are available for my bike at the time of purchasing. They're the Verio levers, so if you open the Allen key here you can slide them up and down. They're quite stubby at the minute. Some people like a longer clutch cable and a shorter brake. I just have them set like so. Um, I got them in the atomized KTM colours, the best I could, with a little adjuster there. Very good set of um, brake levers to be honest with you. The V-Trek. I had them on my last two sets of bikes and um, for the price it cost me 100 euro more or less with a 15% discount. I mean if you were to buy a set of ASVs or Titex or Titrex whatever they're called, mad money. Wouldn't be for me. And the bike actually comes with a default cigarette lighter attachment and it also has a waterproof phone case with a USB attachment. So you can actually just charge your phone on the fly, um, which I find very, very good. Bike has semi-automatic suspension, which is done by WP, which KTM actually owns, believe it or not. KTM actually owns WP suspension. Um, the only other thing I got was a set of Stompy tank grips, well Stompy-esque tank grips. Um, these are actually made by Oxford. The Stompies are only available from the US and they're about 90 euro for a piece of rubber so I said no why am I doing that again so I bought these Oxford ones which are very very grippy actually and they cost me 30 quid so that's a good job good day's work and um, this here is actually off my Heli Turtle Vest 2 this is the lanyard that clicks into the jacket when I'm riding the bike and god forbid if I come off the bike the air vest deploy us. I'll do a review on that air vest soon. Um, the only other thing I got then was a Turretech 40 litre back box. This is the Zega Pro. Very very good case but um, quite expensive for what it is. But very well made. All the brackets there are very very industrial. Very well bolted together. Has the room on top for an extra mesh holder so if you want to carry anything, anything extra the clasp on it is actually quite industrial there's a little button underneath here that you push in with your thumb opens it up and that clunk just signifies the strength of the actual um, spring on it and then if I open this up you can see that I just have the mesh up here to keep my rain gear out of the actual back box there's a lovely little stainless steel tether here to stop the lid from flapping very neat box that just has my compressor and my few bits and bobs, puncture repair kit, etc, etc. So all in all, a very, very good box, but quite expensive. I also had to get a KTM adapter plate, KTM power parts adapter plate. And you can see it there. Um, Turtec do do their own version, but only available in silver. 
so it would have been a silver rack on top of an existing black rack and then the black back box which I thought wouldn't look too good so the good thing about the Touratech actual back box here is this ratchet system and it clicks down very very secure very very secure job and it has bumpers on the side here just in case you scratch them don't have them actually that long so I've been to Scotland that's about it with that and um, performed well totally waterproof just bits and bobs you can actually get for it um, the only other thing I bought for the bike was this exhaust the default exhaust is actually grand sounds rubbish but looks okay um, quite heavy as usually all the exhausts are on motorbikes to comply with the Euro 4 emissions and all that jazz um, I bought this for just under a thousand euro this is the carbon one the actual carbon heat shield was actually an optional extra as was the carbon tip the actual exhaust comes with two baffles that's the largest was in there you do not need to ream up the ECU or flash the ECU or stick in power commanders with the baffles if you run away without the baffle not only is it extremely noisy but you would need to ream up the actual the bike which I wasn't going to do so that does me grand um, Brembo brakes as standard on the bike which is good front and back also Brembo master cylinders which is um, very good the brakes are very good you need the brakes the bike is quite heavy and then with me on top of it and the wallet in the pocket extra weight so you need good brakes um, as far as I know it has a larger front wheel than it does the back wheel I think it's 19 and 17 if I'm not mistaken or 21 and 19 one or the other as I said I'm not too up on the actual specs as you may or may not know it is a 1300cc V-twin LC8 KTM engine it's the same engine that's in the 1290 GT or the Beast as it's known just tuned differently I do have an Optimate 4 hooked up to this bike as well to keep it um, optimised especially in the current climate with this pandemic ruining our lives so it's important to keep the actual bike optimised and up to speed so there we have it lads it's my 2019 KTM 1290 Super Adventure Sport not to be confused with the R which is the off-road version as I said, fairly stock, just a few little tasty tidbits added on. Um, I don't know, I have my key in my pocket here, so it is a keyless start, we'll just see you can it. There you go, daytime running lights, which you can override. You can have the low beams on instead if you want, but I think the actual daytime running lights are quite cool. Um, LEDs, also has four cornering LED lights, so the more you tip the bike over, the added lights come on for you. ATM. the neighbours banging on my door now anyway so as I said hope this video finds you well guys stay tuned for a few more updates and a few more reviews coming out of the gear I have and we do a review of the little Honda NC700 as well I just serviced so that is my little ensemble so take it easy ride safe and I'll meet you on the road and this is all over Arrivederci